So while I cannot claim to know for sure whether or not the universe has a purpose, the case against it is strong and visible to anyone who sees the universe as it is, rather than as they wish it to be. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. The verdict is in. There is no purpose to the universe and no divine authority. The case is strong. 99.9999% probability. Or is it? Every conclusion, religious, philosophical, or scientific, is built on basic assumptions. What are the assumptions behind this percentage? Well, let's take a look. Current science calculates the universe to be 13.7 billion years old, and the Earth is an aged 4.54 billion. Homo sapiens are the new kids on the block, supposed to be hanging around for 90,000 years, a mere blip in cosmic history, right? Well, here's the big question. Is time really the indicator of significance or purpose? Here's what I mean. The universe itself, according to the Big Bang Theory, was pretty much created in the first one trillionth of a second. That's like that long. Big Bang tells us that time, space, gravity, and nuclear force came into existence in that fraction of a second. So that fraction of a second set up the next 13.7 billion years. Yahoo! It certainly seems that gauging significance by relative length of time isn't such a good assumption after all. 99.9% also quantifies the significance of life on Earth. The assumption is that 99.9% .9 of species have gone extinct. Therefore, the event of life must be without purpose. So mankind, as a newcomer, is just the latest link on a meaningless chain. But what if we start from the opposite assumption? If it's true that 99.9% .9 of life goes extinct, the chances of mankind existing is less than 0.01%. Yet, here we are. Such slim odds imply that humanity is anything but random. And if we're not random, then it would be logical to assume we actually do have a purpose. So what is that purpose? Is the purpose of the human body to incubate intestinal microbes? Why, yes it is. In return for living space, the bacteria are a critical part of human physiology. That is symbiosis, but what we're missing here is sentience. I'm not saying bacteria are stupid, but they are, well, <laughs> not real big thinkers. A being with the power to create the cosmos for a purpose would by definition have to be conscious and aware. So the comparison of a god to bacteria may hold a lot of poop, but really not much else. The next assumption comes from a 50-50 shot. There are as many disasters that happen to folks as there are beneficial events. You can't get more random than 50-50. But once again, it all depends on your starting assumption. In the grand scheme of things, is a disaster necessarily a negative event? Even the concept of evolution is fueled by the occurrence of natural disasters. Events that kill are proving grounds. Weaker organisms are weeded out and more efficient forms of life are caused to evolve. You don't have to turn to religion to discern positive consequences in catastrophic forces. And from that viewpoint, the good-bad ratio is a long way from 50-50. One last thought. What if percentages are the true indicator? A majority of the scientific ideas that we now hold have been around for basically 50 years. Science tells us humanity has been around for 90,000. That means we have held our present notions of the universe for 0.555555% of our existence. To approach that number from the other side, it means there is a 99.9444445% chance that our current thinking, yes, even the scientific stuff, has some deeply flawed conclusions. Oops. You know what? 
With those odds, I think it's still a little too early to rule out purpose or God. Whether or not the universe has a purpose? The case against it's weak. Visible to anyone who sees the universe as it is, and not just their basic assumptions. Thanks, Neil, but no thanks on this one.